The 2024 election is over, and now people can focus on what happens next when it comes to the economy or what we're doing, which is what comes next when it comes to housing. So you're going to want to tune in and watch this episode because there's some very clear trends we're going to be reviewing about how to make great real estate decisions over the next 3, 6, 12, 18 months. If you get some value out of this and you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and if you want to schedule a call with our team about your needs, your goals, and how to navigate the post-election market, you can do that with the link in the comments. So the election's over, which is a relief for a lot of people, not so much for who won or who lost, but the fact that they're not getting 11 text messages a day, door knockers in their neighborhood, three pieces of direct mail on a daily basis, because in Pennsylvania, we were a major swing state. And now that the election is over, I'm going to go back and look at historical trends to give you guidance on what's going to happen next with the housing market. So first and foremost, there's something people have now that they didn't have just a week ago, which is certainty. They know who the winners are and they know who the losers are. And you have a clear idea what those policies are going to look like. There's been some talk, nothing, unfortunately, nothing concrete, nothing specific when it comes to housing plans for the winners of the election. There is now certainty. People know what's going to happen next. And the reality is for the people that want more inventory or the people that are nervous about moving, your life will go on no matter who's in the White House, who's in the Senate seats, or your local government. So that certainty will help you make winning decisions for your household and for your family. So when we look at history, there's two charts I'm going to share here. The first one shows that nine out of the last 11 elections, we saw the number of home sales increase the year following a presidential election. This is from our friends over at Keeping Current Matters. There's a second chart. That shows seven out of the last eight elections, we saw house prices rise the year after the election. So what we know is that history is on our side here. And all the market data that I'm looking at every single day, that most experts are looking at every single day, are pointing towards housing prices increasing in the Northeast. How, how, the number of home sales increasing in the Northeast. And we're seeing that just through the month of October, we saw inventory jump up over 11% compared to where it was this time last year. We've seen prices rise roughly 7% year over year, depending on where you're located in our local market, meaning you know what county, what township, what school district, if you're in the city or the suburbs, those numbers are always going to vary a little. Overwhelmingly, we've seen prices go up. So there is certainty that the market's going to continue in that direction. And if you're a buyer or seller, you want to take note of these things here. Now that there's certainty about what's going to happen, and you know what history says because history gives us trends that allow us to make decisions, we know that there's likely going to be more homes for sale next year. There's likely going to be more homes that sell. Remember, we're coming off what is on pace to be the lowest level of home sales since 1995. And it's also clear values are going to keep rising because inventory in our marketplace is still right around that two-month supply. And in order for a market to be balanced, for buyers and sellers to have equal negotiating power, a six-month supply is what a lot of economic experts point to. So there's some good news here that once the election's over, no matter who wins, because over the past eight or the past 11 elections, we've had both sides of the aisle win the election, we are seeing that prices typically go up and that home sales typically go up. The one-year prices went down was in 2008 into 2009 following a financial crash, and the year the number of home sales went down was in the 80s, coming out of a tough time during the 1970s when it came to economic policy. So there's a lot of history on our side here. So if you're thinking about making a move, that's good news. What we also know is last week the Federal Reserve met, and they decreased the federal funds rate by 25 basis points, which was expected. Right now, there's a 70-plus percent chance we're going to see another 25 basis point decrease. In the December meeting, this is what was promised by the Federal Reserve and Chairman Jerome Powell, and it looks like they're going to deliver. What we saw after the election is the Dow Jones rallied. It was up over 1,500 points the next day. And last week and even today, we're seeing the 30-year fixed rate for a conventional mortgage drop below 7%. It was above 7% leading up to the election. So there's some things happening that are trending the right way to make homes hopefully more affordable. Remember, a lot of experts are predicting we're going to see six and a half, maybe even high fives by the end of 2025. And we're also seeing that the 
economy and the markets are responding favorably, which means there should be more transactions to be done in 2025. So what does this mean for sellers and buyers? Now that we know what happened after the election, we know what the Federal Reserve did. I'm clear on two things for home sellers. One, it's likely you're going to see more competition when it comes to listing in the spring. That's typically when a lot of people list their homes. And if rates do come down, like they're projected, and let's say they hit mid sixes, you're going to see a lot of demand as well. So that's good news for home sellers that demand is still there. We're seeing low supply at two months, and there's likely going to be more listings that come to the market because, remember, people that sell a home also, they've got to buy a home. And when rates come down, they may be more likely to make a move and deal with whatever delta they have in their payment. For buyers, what this tells me is that you're likely seeing some increased competition in the spring. You're also likely seeing lower mortgage rates and more housing options. So a lot of positive stuff here. And what I am clear on is the most savvy home sellers and home buyers, they are figuring out what they want, what they can do, what they can qualify for, and how to time the market. And by the way, timing the market doesn't work, but how to be ready to take advantage of opportunities within the market instead right now over the months of November and December. And those people will be poised to jump into the market right after the first of the year when we historically see a lot of activity in the greater Philadelphia area. So the election's over. We've got some positive signs here when it comes to housing. And if you need to strategize or get more information or find out what's going on in your neighborhood or the areas in which you want to live, all you got to do is schedule a call with our team in the link in the comments.